back to my channel and as you all know by now that we are in the exam ready series we are prepping up for the practicals and this is in continuation of my humble attempt to decode the grand viva the possible you know questions the important areas that you need to know and this is in itself you know almost an impossible task in that that it is never possible to make an exhaustive list to okay this is the bunch of questions and the every thing included but this is definitely a comprehensive effort on my part to you know get certain very important must know areas of the you know particularly the immunization the communicable disease epidemiology the non communicable disease epidemiology and try to bring it together it has again we very requested uh, video so i hope it is of as much help as you know asked for and uh, here since in the last video where i took up the you know decoding of the grand viva that what are the possible questions the pro important areas i you know based it on the textbook of psm by you know k park and this is also the same but only thing that based on my, the previous student inputs what i have done this time i have you know uh, put them up in the powerpoint so as to you can you know stop the powerpoint see the questions and then study accordingly so let's begin this and if you are new to this channel please do subscribe and if you like it do like it comment share and subscribe if you haven't as already we'll begin with certain trivia about the immunization immunization happens to be one of the very important you know areas of community medicine and there are several important facts that you should be familiar with and of them are all the vaccine preventable diseases the nis that is the national immunization schedule you should be knowing all the vaccines with their types that whether they are live inactivated toxoid or sub unit whatever is their type the dose the site and route of administration the scheduling the booster doses the side effects if any contraindications dilutions used if any and what to be done if the vaccination dose is missed and the beneficiary turns up late as well as you should be familiar with the newer vaccines that are added in the nis you should be very much conversant with these four terms that what is immunization what is vaccination what is vaccine what is inoculation and you should be able to differentiate between immunization vaccination and inoculation you should also be familiar with the intensified mission indradhanush the mission indradhanush what are the heat sensitive vaccines what are the cold sensitive vaccine about the cold chain distribution the different equipments used in the cold chain distribution how are the vaccines kept what is the dropout rate and what are the action to be considered in case there is an increased dropout rate uh, what are the immunization coverage indicators what is vvm that is vaccine vial monitor and how do you interpret it what is uh, the advantage of using octodisable syringe in the national immunization program how is it helping the certain facts for which you need to know the reasons behind the statements that is why the inactivated polio vaccine was introduced in the nis what is the reason for use of fractional dose of inactivated polio vaccine why the switch took place between 
no trivalent OPV to bivalent OPV, that is TOPV to BOPV. Then what is the reason for the withdrawal of TOPV? What is the reason for using the open vaccine vial policy? And what are the vaccines on which this policy is, you know, used? And then that why it is said that live vaccines are more potent immunizing agent than killed vaccines. You should also be knowing the adverse events following immunization, commonly known as AEFI and the classification thereof and along with a very commonly asked question why flu vaccines are difficult to make and what is the rationale for using hepatitis B vaccine in infants. If you go through my previous YouTube uploads you will find answer to most of them. There are certain important terms in context of this uh, immunization trivia that I am talking of. There is catch up, mop up rounds, ring immunization, heart immunity, AFI, adjuvants. These are all very important terms and often asked in the viva. It is good to go through them. I've just given you a small uh, detailing of each of these in case you are not aware of it. Now coming to a very important chapter that is a communicable disease epidemiology. In fact, it is very vast and exhaustive and I really don't know how to, you know, uh, give you uh, even a comprehensive list. It is so vast, you know, it in this context, you need to know the diseases eradicated. You should be knowing in context of all the vaccine preventive diseases or the communicable diseases, the agent, the host, the source, the reservoir, their incubation period, the routes of transmission, their clinical features. And of course, related to each of these diseases, the definition in terms of that disease, the suspected case, how do you define a probable case in that disease? How do you say that this is a confirmed case in that particular disease? The common complication in each of these diseases, the diagnostic and treatment algorithm of these diseases and vaccines, if any of these diseases are having, you should be knowing the details thereof. So these are the basic tenets based on which each of these communicable diseases you should be studying. That is the agent host, source reservoir, incubation period, routes of transmission, clinical feature. How do you tell that, okay, this is a, you know, suspected case of such and such, probable case of such and such, or confirmed case of such and such. And diagnostic and treatment algorithm, again, for all the communicable diseases. So I am not going into individual ones because these parameters, we have to know of each of these communicable and there are certain facts beyond this which you need to know like what happens you know when there is measles and chickenpox double infection how do you classify ARI how do you manage ARI based on IMNCI and regarding tuberculosis itself there is a you know, huge lot of questions the examiners are very fond of asking the revised classification the treatment outcome definition that is you know whether how do you define a patient who is cured of tuberculosis how do you know you know it is a treatment failure and many more then there is a classification based on drug resistance the case finding tools the stain use that is the zilnansen how do you report a slide of ahb the diagnosis of tuberculosis, both clinical as well as serological diagnosis, how to do it. The tuberculin test, how to do it, how to interpret it. All the antitubercular drugs, the first line, the second line, the DOPS regime, 
the diagnostic and dose regime for both adults as well as the pediatric group. You also need to know the XTRTB, the MDRTB, DST, management of tuberculosis as well as the NTB strategy. Regarding polio, apart from all the basic parameters, you need to have a deco at the acute flaccid paralysis and steps of acute, acute flaccid paralysis surveillance, how to collect the stool sample, what is the size, how do you transport it, what is the transport media, and in case of polio, how the outbreak investigation is undertaken, what are the strategies for polio eradication, you also need to study the hepatitis B as well as little bit of C because in hepatitis B often the question is asked, you know, that uh, why hepatitis B is considered, you know, more dangerous than HIV even. In rabies, it is, you know, a very important disease in the communicable disease sector. You know, you need to know the epidemiology as well as you need to know the post-exposure prophylaxis in case of a dog bite. How do you categorize the dog bites? Pre-exposure prophylaxis in rabies, who are eligible and what do you give? Dengue, malaria, these are very important again. You need to know the types, the diagnosis, the outbreak management, how to intervene at the community level, the malariometric indicators. Another important thing is the integrated vector control. What is the significance of API and infant parasite rate? Regarding leprosy, you need to know the diagnostic and treatment algorithm, which I told you earlier so that this is important for each of them. What is the role of BCG vaccine in leprosy? You need to know a list of common STDs and their causative organisms. You need to know the role of Suraksha clinic and the services offered there in HIV AIDS apart from the common ones you need to know the case definition the lab findings the antiretroviral therapy used the post exposure prophylaxis given the role of both pre and post test counseling in HIV AIDS you need to know why PPTCT is followed you know how this why this program is so important and why parent to child transmission is you know so emphasized among why not just mother to child what is the role of the father in pptct what is the full form of ictc and what is the service offered there you need to know you know some examples of both emerging diseases as well as re-emerging diseases. Regarding food poisoning, you need to know the different types, how to investigate in case of a food poisoning outbreak. Then in case of all these diseases like Japanese encephalitis, KFT, that is the Kaiser Forest Disease, West Nile Fever, Sandfly Fever, the Rickettsial Diseases, you, know, you should be knowing the agent and the vector. That should be a you know, doable thing for now. Regarding Kalazar, apart from the epidemiology, you should be knowing the diagnosis, the treatment, the indicators used. Trachoma, you should be conversant with the trachoma control program. In tetanus, you should be knowing the strategies for maternal and neonatal tetanus elimination. And again, another important disease, leprosy, how to classify the bacterial index and interpretation of that, multidrug therapy in leprosy, MDT, case definition, you know, single dose rifampicin, you know, ENL and reversal reaction and the difference between the two. It's often called, you know, that ENL type 1 and type 2. The epidemiological indicators. So you can, you know, this is almost an endless list and yet you might find you know, some question asked way beyond it. But still, this should give you enough confidence. So now let's get back. So the reasons that may be asked in this context is, you know, 
why measles containing vaccine is given around the 9 months of age what is the role of vitamin a in measles why measles containing vaccine is preferred in hiv patients why only influenza a causes pandemic and not b or c variant hepatitis b is more dangerous than hiv what is the role of zinc in diarrheal management why reduced osmolarity ors is preferred in management of diarrhea what are the reasons behind the set back of malaria and what are the reason that malaria is still not being eliminated or eradicated why syndromic approach is adopted in management of std why india is called a yellow fever receptive area i already feel exhausted at the end of this is you know and i can understand what you people are going to go through but uh, trust me this will certainly help you now coming to a non communicable disease epidemiology with which i am going to wrap up today epidemiology and diagnostic criteria of all these diseases as mentioned that's hypertension uh, coronary heart disease diabetes mellitus stroke rheumatic heart disease blindness cancer road traffic accident obesity and then the modifiable and non modifiable risk factors the program dedicated to some of these that is npc dcs commonest cancer in male as well as female in india and in the globe the methods of screening adopted for these group of diseases the role of primordial as well as the role of primary prevention in non communicable diseases the role of dash diet in the management of hypertension the rule of halves the revised jones criteria what are these cancer registry and the vision 2020 you know avoidable blindness preventable blindness and this list can absolutely go on but since you have only uh, just a day or two to go for your viva i'll wind up here hope you like this video as much as i liked making this for you so as to you know help you through this kind of handhold to share subscribe comment it means a lot to me and it's always a pleasure when i see smiling face in uh, and my students happy so hope this really makes a difference to your study hard and all the best thank you so much